So with regards to that, the Holy Prophet Wasallam says that Allah is saying, imagine a great clear message that tomorrow the people will realize. What does it mean tomorrow? What does it mean by tomorrow in these words? That tomorrow it means in this hadith that the, the day that's to come tomorrow, that very soon that time's about to come. Qiyamah is not far. It's not distant from us. Very soon it will arrive. That Today in our homes, those people who are in our homes, our parents, our uncle, our mamu, our chacha, our relatives, they've become a dream. They've gone, haven't they? In the same way, we will also disappear one day from this earth. So Allah's Nabi said that tomorrow, very soon, as Allah Ta'ala says, that you will learn the whole dunya on the day of Hashar, resurrection. They will see, they will understand. The people, the who were the people who held respect and honor and dignity? Who are the honorable people? We'll realize on the day of Hashar. What a great title, eh? great status. So Allah Ta'ala says, the whole of the people on Hashar, such respect and honor and dignity they'll have that the whole dunya will be amazed and shocked at seeing them. And who are those people? So what, what, what is the Holy Prophet ﷺ trying to say in the Sahaba Ikram are asking? Because they were lovers of understanding and realizing they were those who sat on the straw mats and they ate one date and they had uh, one, uh, just one day to eat and nothing else to their name. They didn't even have clothes but they were being given the encouragement that this dunya is nothing, don't run after it. That whatever you get here will go after a few days and somebody else will capture it. Take hold of it. So the Sahaba Akram were very surprised. They said that they want in permanent respect. They said, Ya Rasulullah, who will be those people who Allah Ta'ala has given great honor and respect to that tomorrow the whole of the mankind will look at them. So now the Prophet gave the answer with the Amal. Because this is the real answer, isn't it? These aren't words to listen to. These are words to act and implement. So don't we need respect tomorrow? Then listen to this and understand this is a guarantee that Rasulullah gave. This is Sahih Hadith, I'm telling you. Sahih Hadith. The guarantee for tomorrow, for that time. That today if we practice that deed, then Alhamdulillah, what will we become? Understand on the plane of resurrection, you'll realize how respectful the people will be who do this action. And there'll be amazing, fantastic way they'll be welcomed and introduced. If Allah is saying this, if Allah is defining that these are the best people, most respectful people, honorable, then the whole of the universe will bow in front of that person. The whole universe will bow in front of that person, hold him in esteem. So then Allah Subhanahu wa Taala said again, in the Sahaba Kram, they were listening. Who are those people? They asked, meaning that what will be their special quality that Allah will give them so much respect and esteem? Will they be from outside foreigners? Who will they be those people? What will they have to their name? So then Allah Subhanahu wa Taala explained the amal, the action, the deed that they will say, Subhanallah. So this is an action to implement, to not just to listen to, to implement. So what was the amal? Nabi Sallallahu said that those people that in the world they used to practice this deed for which Allah Ta'ala will give them that response on the day. What is the amal, the deed? That in the masjids, where? In the masjids, they used to, used to gather and attend the gatherings of Allah Ta'ala's dhikr. Subhanallah. Look at this. The, what a great guarantee for this action that in the masjids in the house of Allah all other actions of the world they left and they used to sit in the gathering in the majlis of the dhikr of Allah the remembrance of Allah not alone in the majlis tell me as the Khwaja Masum rahmatullahi he stated that he's a bani the head of this silsila mujaddadi silsila he said the most person in loss most of all and he'll be in loss from this silsila the person will lose out the shaitan has made him run away from this silsila as the Khwaja Masum sahab rahmatullahi said that this silsila, this order of the Sawuf Naqshbandi silsila, this is the highest and greatest silsila, greatest order. These are his words that I'm sharing with you. Yes, and he knew about all the salasil, all the orders and the chains. He says the greatest and best order, Naqshbandi silsila, for this reason, that two things of our deen, two factors of our deen, and these things, both of the, those two factors are from which this silsila starts. They're, they're the condition of this order, of the Naqshbandi order. Two factors, two azim uh, elements or conditions without which you can't travel. And this is whoever becomes a Naqshbandi. First he has to complete these two conditions when he's bayah. 
to the shaykh, whether it's a man or a woman. That's why people on the way who are weak, no, 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 it's too hard for me. Oh, I need games, I need nafs and shaitan. He can't um, be steadfast in a silsila like this. He goes in the reverse gear and runs away. He steps back, you turn, oh, no, 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 it's too hard. Oh, it's too strict, too severe, too demanding. But there are two conditions in this silsila that they are the conditions. What are those conditions? Sharia and sunnah Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. These are the two conditions. The Nabi al karim says, Sunnah is lazim in this silsila. That's why, don't you see? The whoever is attached to the silsila, who enters with a good niyyah, immediately he starts to implement the sunnah. Because he has love for the sunnah. He has love for the sunnah. And this is the ruh, the life of the deen. Without this, there's, everything is a failure. The first condition that it generates the love in that's why it's ula and afzal silsila. There's no other reason. There's another reason. Allah Ta'ala says the Naqshbandi Silsala, Naqshbandi Wood has a special quality. That's why state has a Khwaja Mawazum said that person's a loser. That he's entered into Silsala then due to his desires or oh, it's too hard. Oh, oh, I can't practice this. And then he takes a U-turn and, and runs away. Such a big loser, such a big loser that the Wali of Allah is saying from his blessed tongue, his speech, that his respected father, Hazrat Mujaddad al-Fatani said, whoever enters into this is a guarantee